The reasons we went to three zones for Prototype 2 was feedback from the players, you know, they really wanted a, a better visual world. They wanted a world that they could really be immersed in. And by going to three distinct zones, it really, what it meant was that we could give a greater level of, of memory and resources and just focus and attention that our artists could deliver to each zone to make them absolutely stunning and beautiful and, and, and a rich environment to play with. It. It's enabled us to provide the player with different challenges, different experiences, and give the player something unexpected whenever they progress forwards. We wanted to have three areas where we could have sort of a military zone, a pristine zone, and an infected zone, and have them stand on their own. We really set out to have each zone have a very distinct emotion as you play through them, a different look and feel. When you go to the green zone, we wanted to make sure that you felt that the military was very much there, keeping the city streets safe and making the infection stay at bay. Uh, so you get a greater uh, military population, you get a, you know, less destroyed buildings, less papered over buildings, you know, you really, you know, they tried to make it look pretty and nice. Our responsibility is sell the story, sell the mood and the feel of the location. So you will see lots of guys sitting on the um, sidewalks, playing against the buildings, uh, kind of hiding. We also focused on having a dynamic exposure so that you could have dark areas and bright areas and, and having the camera really adjust for that so um, it didn't feel like this, this monotone um, area of just constant intensities. A lot of the threat that you find in the green zone is slightly more insidious, it's kind of hidden away. It's not as overt as in the yellow zone where there's military absolutely everywhere, but as you dig deeper into the green zone, you start to understand that you know it has its own set of secrets in there, which you know, I'm, I'm not going to go into details in this particular conversation. The yellow and the green zone uh, represent uh, sort of the, the the progression to the red zone. The, the green zone starts out as a as a uh, living normal civilization where people are still going about their daily work. Uh, they're still doing their normal things. Uh, the yellow zone is more of a, a camp where, where th things have gone wrong. They've moved people in, they've moved people out. It's a military quarantine zone. No one moves anywhere without moving through checkpoints. Uh, you know, your yellow zone, we really wanted that feeling of oppression. We really wanted the feeling of too many people crowded into a small space. We wanted to make you feel that Gentech is performing experiments on the human population. With the yellow zone having kind of expanded in such a way that you know the shanty towns are spilling out into the streets, what you tend to find at ground level at least, it's a much more enclosed gameplay space and a much more dense gameplay space, which means that if you get into a fight, it changes your tactical options. So it's just asking different things of the player and requiring them to approach situations in a different way. The checkpoints are far more important. The, the, the places where uh, the military lineup meets the protesters is a far more interesting space than just a space that's completely filled with military or a place that's completely filled with infected. So as you go through each zone, you really will feel, you know, this is the heart of darkness. This is sort of the safe zone. And this is kind of the, you know, overcrowded, too many people. And even the people within that, the general population, you'll feel that, that what those people are feeling. You know, when you get to the green zone, you've got people milling about much more naturally. And then when you get to the red zone, you're going to be hard pressed to find just Joe Civilian. Uh, you're going to find a lot of infected, you're going to find a lot of people worried for their life. So the zones are actually unlocked in a linear sequence as you go through the game. So you'll start out in the yellow zone and then through the course of events you get dragged on into the next zone and then the zone after. But once you've unlocked any given zone, you're free to travel between them at will to you know, complete any of the side missions or other content that you may not have finished there or things that you want to go back to to try and you know, sort of uh, to improve your performance at, etc. Prototype 2 is still very much a, a completely open world game where you have total flexibility to go wherever you want and do whatever you want, whenever you want. <laughs>